Hello, I'm Joel. I'm Alex. And normally we review underappreciated films on our review series, The Cinemologists. But today we're going to talk about Japanese aftershave. Whatever else it may be, the magical multiverse of YouTube has become a pop culture archive, providing refuge for discarded audiovisual ephemera from throughout time and space. And one of the most beloved sections of this strange library is that of Japanese commercials, many of which feature Western celebrities in decidedly unusual situations. Here you can witness Sylvester Stallone traveling the globe to deliver ham, Agent Cooper shilling for canned coffee, Sean Connery singing about yogurt with his rabbit sidekick, and Nicolas Cage's crippling pachinko addiction. I love pachinko. I love pachinko. These commercials may seem rich and strange to Western viewers, but you can also see a unique spirit of inventiveness in how they're directed, and it's no surprise that many excellent Japanese filmmakers found their way into television marketing at some point in their careers. In the 1970s, one of the most in-demand commercial directors was Nobuhiko Obayashi, best known in America today as the director of the 1977 horror comedy classic, Haosu. Right here we have the lovely Criterion edition on Blu-ray of House, which um, they sort of resurrected this film mm -hmm. uh, several years ago. Yeah, I remember there was just so much, uh, just so much excitement. They came out with t-shirts and... Oh, you see those floating around. Oh yeah, you still yeah. see those all over the place. And it was, it was just when I was getting into collecting Criterions. Yeah, really starting to get into a lot of international films and things like that, so... Um, House was was definitely a, a big part of growing up cinematically for me. Yeah, it is very um, nostalgic thinking yeah. about that because I, I actually saw it in the theater before uh, the Blu-ray came out. That's right. I and it was about uh, that. a theater N in Wilmington, Delaware. I remember the day this came out, I took a bus to the Christiana Mall to get it mm -hmm. because the, and I was actually having like a small screening of it on the Halloween weekend. It's just kind of perfect too in that sense, you know, being. It's his debut feature and it's just filled with so much like youthful enthusiasm and experimentation and just like a, a, a youthful love of cinema in, in both the film itself, the performances, the music, and especially, especially the camera work. Oh my gosh, yeah. Yeah. That's the most unique thing about it, I think. It, it's mm -hmm. not really very, I don't know, derivative of a lot of other things. It's kind of dizzying sometimes. It's very hallucinatory. But in a way that fits the material, yeah. I think, very well. Yeah, I remember when I first saw it in the theater, I remember the film from that experience as if it was a dream or something, mm -hmm. because it was almost hard to get a concrete footing in like a, in the space, because everything was shifting every like few seconds, so the perspective or just the transitions even. And that same wild visual flair is present in Obayashi's best commercial work, including his magnum opus, his marketing masterpiece, the Charles Bronson Mandem commercial. Oh yes. If you haven't seen this thing, pause this video immediately, find it on YouTube, and enjoy it in its entirety, because we don't want to spoil it for you. Have, have you seen it? Okay, then, then we'll go on. So Alex, you are the one who discovered the Mandem commercial first. Um, could yes. you could you inform us a little bit of your journey to finding it? Yeah, it was actually pretty easy because they mentioned it in the booklet in here. It was very it was very uh, exciting because they said Charles Bronson writing in Death Valley, and I looked it up. I just figured, oh, Charles Bronson Japanese commercial. That's kind of how I figured, and then uh, it was. I was not, pr it was so jubilant. And then I recognize all these people in it too, or like the one a actor in there, what is it, Percy Helton? He's a uh, actor who's been in hundreds of things, I think, ever since like the silent era. Good night, Mr. Bronson. Skin tight. I, I think the thing I remember him most is is Kiss Me Deadly. Yeah. Where Ralph Meeker shoves his fingers into a, <laughs> into a drawer. A couple years back, I was doing some film screenings and uh, one another Halloween screening I showed House and just before the screening I showed 
the Charles Bronson Mandem commercial, the first one, and in the part of the commercial where Charles Bronson takes his shirt off and flings it into the air, there was several exclamations of giddy laughter from the girls in the audience who probably had not been very familiar with who Charles Bronson was, but it's... It, what an introduction. It's powerful. <laughs> There's a mirth to it, I think, that sells it. And in the Obayashi's commercials as well, there's that same sense that you see in House of, of just try everything, mm -hmm. you know, throwing things at the oh wall, visually speaking, and just yeah. seeing what, what sticks. And, and a lot of it sticks. Oh, um, yeah. yeah. He even uses a trombone shot uh, or the vertigo shot with the uh, tracking forward while zooming out, uh, which is the weirdest thing to use for this commercial, but he's just like, you know, why not? <laughs> yeah, but but that was just sort of, you know, the gateway that opened up into the, the wonderful world of Mandom. That campaign mm -hmm. is sort of its own world now. It, it really is, because there's, there's a whole spread of, of different ads. Um, you know, there's, there's obviously that one, which is sort of, you know the more the more refined masculinity of, of tuxedos and and uh, smoking pipes and uh, you know lounging about in in your affluent uh, high rise apartment and then there's uh, you know the the sort of more rugged version of that where he's out camping and catching fish with his bare hands and uh, playing poker with with the mandom. It's brilliant, really. They in, they intercut like his um, his Wild West, you know, that sort of ruggedness into the mm -hmm. the more suave commercial when he's just dousing himself, drenching himself in mandom. Yeah, the, uh, the mandom is bringing forth this other provocations like this. Yeah. This is the essence of mandom. <laughs> And, and the song. The song. All the world loves a lover, all the girls in every land of man to know. The joy of loving is to live in the world of man. There's a someone who's waiting for you. I mean, it's got to go in the pantheon of uh, of jingles. It's, you could call it, it's a, it transcends jingles. It really does, but at the same time, it has it, it it has that quality of a jingle where it's just excessively catchy. And look, well, you got they it. They made a single. You got the single. Yeah. So what do we got here? We have right here the uh, the lyrics as well as uh, the, the music, so you can play along at home. And of course, with it being a forty-five, it's it's not just the Mandem song, which is also called Lovers of the World. It also includes a B-side called The Glory of My Woman. It's not that good. But, but, Lovers of the World is everything we've said it is. It is a beautiful thing. I mean, all this talk about Mandem's really getting me, you know, curious. What does it smell like? Well, it's uh, funny you should ask that. Um, because I bought some. Wow! You can you can actually uh, purchase this from Amazon.com. They still make it. Still has the logo uh, that we all know and love. And right underneath it says, and I quote, "All the world loves a lover. All the world loves Mandem. Man, oh man, that's Mandem." So yeah, just order some off of Amazon. There are a bunch of Japanese sellers there who will ship it right to you. Just look at these reviews from satisfied customers. A nice citrusy scent with a punch of jet fuel. I like it. It's a nice manly scent that's not too strong but has enough of a kick. The ladies seem to dig it too. Highly recommended. 
Like Tanqueray steeped in bug spray. Exactly what I expected. A wonderful blend of aromas bringing together old musky lake cattails, high karate and cheap Louisiana call girl with the slightest hint of a Japanese geisha. Armani and Dior can't hold a candle to this. The slogan on the bottle says it all. Man, oh man, it's Mandem. It is a good purchase, and the price is good. Chemically speaking, Mandem is comprised of war cries and eagle beaks, and is perfectly safe for use on the skin and on submarines. Thank you, Mandem, for making me smell like a 65-year-old Japanese truck driver slash weightlifter who just ate two bowls of ramen and rescued eight children from a rising river. My wife and dog says I am too young to wear this, 40, but I say, deal with it. I am now a man. Smells good. After applying Mandem, Charles Bronson executed a roundhouse kick with such acceleration that his foot traveled back in time and killed Amelia Earhart. Last night I splashed on Mandem all over my body, just like the commercial. The next morning I found out my chest was full of hair and my beard had never fuller, and I thought I would never go through puberty. Thanks Mandem, and thank you Charles Bronson. This is the bee's knees. Smells like beer and sexy time. Smells like Satan's undergarments after a mixed doubles volleyball match, but in a good way. So you want to try it? Yeah. All right. Well, I guess we'll have to do it just like just like Bronson did in the commercial. Um, well, uh, I mean, you, uh, yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. Show show us the correct way to. There we go. Okay. All right. Well, I'll just smell it first. Just, yeah, yeah. Just just go in there. Wow. Ah. Mm. It smells, you know, almost um like. Some kind of, uh, just like a, some leaves of, you know, like oh, dry wow. leaves and, and a little bit of leather and, you know, it has that, that, that slightly pungent quality that all aftershaves do have, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, but it's, 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 a, it's not, a, it's not overbearing. It's not overpowering. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's kind of got that, as you said, sort of like a, a leafy, leafy thing going on. There's something almost... Not quite, not quite minty, but sort of, there's a little, little bit of that in there. Well, I'll just, oh, I say, oh, there's, there's that leather that you were talking about. Oh, oh, oh wow. That's, uh, mm. All right. Well, well that's, uh, I, I must say, <laughs> I, I, so... uh, it definitely sold me. That is a, that is a wonderful, uh, this, mm. it's great, but. I mean, it doesn't really matter what we think about it. The man has a point. What do the ladies think? Mm. It smells like somewhere in the mountains. You know, if I were to give it a setting. Yeah, definitely, it smells you know, mature and sophisticated, but it's not, it's not really like sweet. It's more of like a, kind of like a spice, but like, like a mountain spice, I guess. Uh, smells like a man. <coughs> so there you have it, folks. Go out and get yourselves some mandem. And remember, all, all the, the world, world loves a lover. lover. All the world loves a lover, all the girls in every land are meant to know. The joy of loving is to live in the world of man. There's a 